read me romance read read me romance read me romance read read me romance you could take a look in a book that's fine or you could sit back relax and unwind and read me romance read read me romance welcome back lady listeners hey welcome back to the second half of the brought this hostage by jagger cole we have got the second part of the story in just a little bit. But before then, we're going to read some lady listener emails. I love Thursday's episodes. I actually yeah. wanted to recommend a book real quick. Oh, yeah. Go for it. Actually, Oh, that's books. what we're doing now? That's what we're doing? We're going to recommend books? <laughs> <laughs> I just read them because after I read The Boss by Melanie Moreland, uh-huh. I was like, I want to read more. And um, Jessa Dean sent me baby gravy oh yeah which i um which i loved it was my favorite in her like thanksgiving series Mm -hmm. so i know it's past thanksgiving but it's really cute fun book if you guys want to read it Mm -hmm. it gave me a lot of um a little bit of like shielding lily vibes not like where he's super perfect yeah yeah yeah. but i like after i read it because i enjoyed it so much because i always like when the hero has a really good like mom and sister Mm -hmm. you know that really take in the heroine that's sweet to her i like that like good family uh, dynamic yeah but they were like at the first chapters like they're at college or whatever they're about to go away but i was i text her and i was like have you ever you've never done a high school book have you and she's like no i was like you should put that down so maybe we'll get that Well, she sent an ad today that um, it's for a book that just came out last week, uh, wrapped up for Christmas, yeah. I guess. That one, I guess that's the Christmas follow-up to it, to the baby gravy, maybe? I don't, or it? I don't know. I just see the know. cover. I didn't see a book by it. I know. I didn't I see I'm going to read the it. Cover. Whatever it is, the cover is really Yeah, cute. obviously you're going to read it. <laughs> so, um, but then I also, I'd gone on, God, I'm always scared I'm going to butcher her name, Jamie Schlosser. 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 I don't know how I'm, she has a series called The Good Guy Series, which mm-hmm. I adore that somebody did that instead of Bad Boys. But there's yep. a book that came out a little while ago called Loner. And I don't know why I hadn't read it. I think it's because it was longer, but I read that and I just loved it. Was it, was it good? Yeah, the guy was like, he grew up in foster care, and she's been like, it's like a crazy story. Like, where she, her mom has kept her hid away because her mom says she's crazy, and they live in this big mansion, so she thinks Ooh, she's crazy. it's like but Rapunzel. Really, like, mom's crazy, and he's kidnapping <laughs> her out because the dad, the mom took her away as a kid, and the dad who's in the Irish mob, or maybe not the Irish mob, finds out about her, and mm-hmm. just a crazy story. But just the two of them coming together because they're both kind of loner she's a little Mm -hmm. quirky she's been sheltered away and yeah he's just the way he is he doesn't Mm -hmm. like to be touched and all that stuff but them coming together and being on the run together is really sweet and i love that all in from like day one when he comes and it's like trying to steal her out of that house it was just a really sweet, fun book, and I kicked well, myself. In Jamie Schlosser is like she's super sweet, and he, like her writing is always so sweet. I love it. So, if you guys are looking for that, it was nice. It was like a mixture of laughs and them coming together, and mm-hmm. I just really, really enjoyed it. So, mm-hmm. I'm putting that I out there. That. It's in Kindle Unlimited. Read it. I'll put it in the show notes. Um, when you mentioned the, what you had read lately, you were talking about Kindle and it reminded me, I read a book on Kindle it, because normally I go through my audios and I'm like, Oh, what have I been listening to? I read a book on Kindle and I posted it in read me romance headquarters with the warning. It's nasty as fuck. I said, trigger warning. This is nasty as fuck. It is called ganged by goblins, monster <laughs> erotica by Lana Taylor. You have to search for that specific title in Amazon because it's hidden because it's erotica. They've like filtered it out. Say it again but and I'll put it in the show notes. Ganged by goblins. She gets gang banged by goblins. This like, book is 68 goblins, pages. Like, what is like trolls. Like people who are trolls. All right. And not only that, she's stuck in a wall when it happens. So like half her ass is in one room and her face is in the other and she gets it on both sides. So like, I can't. it's oh, I found it. disgusting, and I loved I it. <laughs> so oh, I'm sure it got hidden because of that cover. Oh Amazon, no, that cover! It's whole Amazon ass. Amazon is really it's hard on ass. asses for some reason. Mm-hmm. Like you can have tits hanging out and stuff, but mm-hmm. for some reason you do a little bit of ass, and they're like, nope, take it I'm off. Yeah, so twenty eight pages, guys. 
it's Kindle is it even 28 i thought it was like 68 pages it's no it's i'm not shocked not shocked it's 28 pages a so, dry spell that's gone on for far too long mm -hmm. <laughs> it's it is like there's like maybe seven of them so but like so how this happened was i was talking to eagle about like pen names and stuff and she was talking about Lana Taylor. And then she was like, well, I don't know if she has her pen name is public. And then I was like, I looked it up. And no, it is public. She has it in the back of this book because she says like, oh, better known as my such and such name on it. Okay. Because I want to look it up. Because when she had it on there, I was like, what the fuck? We've had her on the podcast. Ooh. So she writes, is, her name is Tracy Lauren. And then oh. so... I know. I was like, we fucking had Tracy Lauren on the podcast. I was like, wait a minute. So she writes these nasty monster erotica under Lana Taylor. Why and can't we put one of these on the podcast? I know. She was she was like, can we turn this one into a podcast book? Oh, my God. <laughs> Listen, there is so much semen in this book. The amount of body fluids. And it's gross. Like, she talks about how, like, their dicks are small and like they're gross and yet I could not stop reading. <laughs> but thick. I bet they're thick, aren't they? I'm sure. I don't even know if it they're matters. Small, but thick. Sure. <laughs> oh my God. But she's just getting railed. But Eagle was telling me about this book and I was like, I just I, I need to know how do they figure out who goes first? Do they find it? Fight reminds for me of God when you said that there is this dirty porn how do we even get here oh my god i don't know but i'm glad we're here <laughs> i remember i haven't watched porn in a while i go on stints but i just remember when i would look up like the forced mm -hmm. rapey kind of porn yep. there was this guy that always wore a mask and he was thicker and chubby and had a belly mm -hmm. but he had like this short dick but i swear to god it was the thickest dick i've ever seen really yes oh now i'm gonna need to know like, i wish i could find details. him i don't all of his pornos his face was always hidden god he was which dirty. makes it even better to me i don't want to see their face it ruins so it. his face was hidden and he talked terrible and he was not a good looking body man like the typical <laughs> you would watch in a porn but it was almost added to the whole but yeah dirty, that's what this is. bad appeal and i was that's like how this book is it's so I can't disgusting believe you've had to have seen this guy i'm sure maybe you, you sent it to me <laughs> if you worked up on that i can't even remember mm -hmm. what it was called website god what was that website they was to watch all the porn on i can't remember what forced um, something forced xx oh god that was a long time ago he was on there okay god, good it's mm -hmm. been years since i've probably seen him we're gonna have to look that up now share the link um but yeah so that's what this book is like where it's just it's dirty and gross and yet um turned on yeah <laughs> like, like i, I said that guy i oh that guy I sticks in my head and i yeah yeah there he is it's just there <laughs> so that one i mean this book gangs by the goblin uh lana taylor like i just you know it's poor jagger cole he's like why my episode he's like what is it why my episode why are they talking about this oh my god i'm so scared but if you read it if you saw my recommendation and you like that i have another recommendation ruby um ruby dixon says to read finley finn is the name f-i-n-l-e-y the last name is f-e-n-n -N. it's called the lady in the orc like the orc, like the big muscly mm -hmm. troll. Yes. And because I told her, I was like, I said, I was almost a little bit grossed out in the What's other that? book. even But I didn't stop reading it. That's a nice looking cover. Even with I the know. green. I know. He's like all muscly and scarred. Damn, this got 644 reviews. Oh, it's nasty. So oh, this, this is a real book. Oh, I emailed Finley Finn to try to get her on the podcast. <laughs> I was like, look, can you do that? But I haven't heard back yet. So if anybody knows her, reach out to her. <laughs> but um, so yeah, so but she's got a whole series of these too. And it, they're just like, because I was telling Ruby Dixon, I was like, because I, I posted up about that in headquarters. She was like, oh, if you like that, you'll like this. And I was like, you know, I was almost a little grossed out in the gang by the goblin thing because of all the body fluids. And she's like, oh, well, maybe you won't like this. I was like, it's not going to stop me from reading it. Like, I, I don't know what else to tell you. I'm still, I bought it. <laughs> like, it's in there on my Kindle. So, 
there's that. If you want to get your monster kink on, there's some weird shit out there. No, I'm like reading this book by I'm like, what is <laughs> I'll put the the lady in the orc in the show notes for you guys okay. too. It's Kindle Unlimited. All right, let's read a couple of lady listener emails before Jagger burns his ears out. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so this one says, "Hold on, oh, I read that one last week. Hold on, sorry, in my stack." All right, this says wedding objection. I didn't say this in my last email, but you can totally use my name on air. So when my love and I finally had our wedding ceremony, I invited my ex. We remained friends over the years and didn't think it would be a problem. Wrong. <gasps> oh, shit. I haven't oh, read God. this. Well, first of all, she came wasted. Oh, okay. So it was a girl and a girl. Okay. So first of all, she came wasted and was causing quite a scene. Um among our guests and the worst part was in the middle of the ceremony she started sobbing and screaming obscenities at the top of her lungs to make matters worse she started making her way up the front where the actual ceremony was someone eventually stopped her and she disappeared we of course continued the ceremony we had the reception at a family member's house and guess where she disappeared to well me and my bridesmaids left the venue first so i could change into my reception outfit and by the time I got there, I had to pee so badly. Anyway, the family member's house was a tiny place with only one bathroom. So you had to walk through the bedroom to get to it. So yeah, in my family member's bed is none other than my ex and the groom's women. That's what we called them. I asked, what are you doing in here? And she yelled at me, get out of here. Are you fucking married now? As if she thought I would join them. Remember, I said wasted. Anyway, it was fucking awful. And the, the time now, but we laugh about it now. Oh, my God. It was fucking awful at the time, but we laugh about it now. Your loyal lady listener, Krista. Oh, my God. Does she God. mean her and the spouse laugh about it now or her and the Yeah, her and the spouse laughed about it okay. now. <laughs> Jesus Christ. Oh, my God. Okay, hold on. Is this... I printed these. No, these are two different people. Okay. I was like, there's another wedding disaster. Is this the same thing? <laughs> All right. This says wedding disasters, kink, and sleepovers. So this wasn't the actual wedding, but prior to the wedding. This girl just gets into it. I like it. We were supposed to show up early to do the wedding photos prior to the ceremony so that we would only have to do the couple's one after the ceremony. Anyway, I showed up on time, but he didn't. As the time drew closer, I started panicking that he was going to leave me at the altar. Turns out he stopped at Subway for lunch because he was hungry. To this day, we still give him shit about stopping at Subway. I would never let my husband live that down. Hmm. There are two kinks I didn't realize I had until I read them. The first was voyeurism, specifically when someone sees a couple having sex and sex and starts masturbating to it. And then the person who's masturbating gets caught by one of the people having sex and they watch each other getting off. Oh, my God. So hot. Mm. That is hot. I agree. This probably shouldn't have surprised me knowing some of the shit I've done in public, but it's still a bit surprising. LOL. Also, the clothed male <laughs> slash naked female. I think I read that in a club private book by Allie Decker. I might be wrong about the author, but pretty sure about the series. And good God, that was hot. I, I love, agree. there's something about when that they strip them down and they the haven't got their hottest. clothes off yes. and just fucking them. Yeah. That's the hottest shit ever. You, It's actually like initials you can look up on Pornhub. It's like CM for clothed male and then NF for naked female. Like if you put in CN, CM and F, I think you can find it based on that. Just since we're all going to be Googling goblin shit later. Just <laughs> throw that in there. <laughs> All right. When I was younger, uh, having a sleepover at my house, I ran upstairs to use the bath restroom and saw my mom and her boyfriend getting it on in the guest bedroom with the door wide open. First, gross. Also, <laughs> also so glad no one else had come upstairs with me. <laughs> the podcast, I love the podcast and discovered a ton of new to me authors. Keep up the good work. I'm not going to say her name just in case. <laughs> gross. All right, this is Wedding Story. Hello, lady writers. I love listening to you guys every day. It's like I have three new best friends. <laughs> you guys are the best. I hope I'm not too late. This is from 2019. But I had a wedding story for you. 
It may be too depressing, but it's 100% real. Oh, no. My wedding day, my mother-in-law-to-be wasn't feeling well, so she went to rest between the ceremony and the reception. I hope she doesn't die. I, I know. Just, I just that in my head. <laughs> I know. Oh, my God. In that time, she had a cardiac arrest and died. Jesus Christ, she did. It was horrible. We did have the reception, but canceled the honeymoon. So crazy. She was in the wedding photo, so that's good. I am laughing, but this is horrible. I mean, at least she was in the wedding photo. I know. But my husband was so sad about it. We never put the photos out. So there you have it. Most depressing wedding ever. Keep doing what you're doing, girls. Fuck your day up. I'm not saying her name on that one. Oh, girl. She really did share the deep shit on that one. She's like, you know what? Eat it. <laughs> like, there you go. <laughs> All right. This one says wedding objection. It's kind of long. I don't know if we have time to read it. Maybe I'll say I'll say that one for next time. We're gonna we're gonna end on the depressing one. On that. <laughs> I know the other one I have is like two pages. I don't want to. I right. know. Um, but yeah, just to reiterate, um, the Goblin book definitely check those out. <laughs> no notes. I know. Maybe yeah. slide in the Alexa book. Grab yes. a Jagger Christmas book. Oh yeah. Book. <laughs> so we got to um, don't forget your Alexa Riley books. Oh, uh, his Christmas tree topper might be out by now. I don't know. Your guess is as good as ours, people. You just just check our website or something. That was a media. cute one. That was really really fun. That actually stemmed from us talking on the podcast when I said I follow this woman that decorates trees for a living. You're like, we should write a book about that, and we did. <laughs> it was and oddly so enough, fun. The guy in that book, there's going to be a guy in that book that will be in the first podcast book of next year. Yep. Uh huh. That's right. In 2022, you're going to get a little a little side piece of Cupid. So side piece. A little side piece. All right. So for Jagger Cole, I just want to remind you guys that what well, he's got to speak this week. Sorry. Um. Let's see. He's got it saved on here. Hold it's on. got a have Christmas all... book that's extra dirty. Yes. Capturing Christmas. That's out right now. It's part of the Filthy Dirty Christmas multi-author series. Um, it's 99 cents and in KU. So grab that. Um, Brutal King is out. Um, it's $2.99 and in KU. And today he's got the fourth standalone book in the Savage Air series, Forbidden Crown. A professor student taboo age gap brought for romance. It's got Damn, everything. Student all teacher those Give me a secret baby. Gap. Let's roll. <laughs> I know. So that's out today and it's two ninety nine or in KU. Um, and then also reminder for the giveaway this week, he's doing ebook copies of all three books in the Savage Air series and signed paperbacks of all three books as well. So make sure you enter to win that. Let's All go right. get him. Let's, let's take him to the other side of this. <laughs> All right. We'll see you guys on the other side. Bye. Bye. Chapter six. Talia. His eyes blink and my breath rushes out. Thank God. Thank God he's okay. I might not be anything close to being a doctor, but I do know my way around some basic first aid. Moving him was out of the question, seeing how big he is but I was able to push him over to his side and get to the ugly gash on his back. It's been 15 minutes, and I've been slowly trying to get Gatorade down his throat as the bandages stop the bleeding. Roman frowns, but his lips curl into a smile when he sees me. What happened? You... you were wounded somehow. You're back. I frown. It might have been from the gunfight outside, maybe shrapnel or maybe a bullet grazing you? He groans, chuckling darkly. Oh, fuck. I fainted, didn't I? I grin. Just a little bit. He grunts as he moves to sit. Hey, hang on. You should... No, I'm, I'm okay. He winces a little bit with the pain, but he seems to muscle through it until he's sitting up, looking me in the eye. He smiles. And you, you fixed me. I nod, chewing on my lip. You could have run. I swallow, holding his gaze. To what? He nods, smiling wryly. Well, you still could have. Maybe I don't want to run, or ever go back to what I had before. He looks away, but then he turns back, suddenly his hand sliding into my hair, and I moan as his lips find mine. Roman kisses me like our lives depend on it. 
It's like a Hollywood-type, passion-filled, toe-curling kiss. My mouth opens for his, and I whimper as his tongue teases mine. You should rest, I breathe as he slowly pulls back. I can't resist you, he groans. I can't resist you either. I moan as his mouth crushes to mine once again, stealing my breath away. But when he slowly pulls back again, he frowns as his eyes slip over me. I've slipped into a t-shirt and sleep shorts while he was resting. I look down and realize the mess on me. You've got blood on you, he murmurs. I shrug. It's fine. Come. He stands, barely wincing from the pain. He turns, takes my hand, and pulls me after him as he heads down the hall. This is your room? I blush, groaning. Yeah, it is, the whole pink, lacy, little girl-looking shebang. I wince with embarrassment at showing this place to a man, especially one like him. But he just turns and smiles as he pulls me into him. I like your room, he murmurs. It feels cozy in here, safe. And pink, I mumble. He chuckles. Pink suits you. Come. He tugs me into the room and then into the unsweet bathroom. He walks over and starts to run the water in the huge clawfoot tub. He dumps bubble soap into it and the whole thing fills with suds. He turns back to me, moving close. I whimper as he starts to peel my clothes off. But I'm not embarrassed this time. I'm excited. His hands skim over me, barely touching my skin. It's like he needs to keep himself from just grabbing me and having me any way he wants. Instead, he gently helps me into the tub before he reaches for his pants. He pulls them off, then his boxers. My jaw drops. Holy shit. My eyes bulge as I stare at Roman's huge cock, thick, veined, and hanging gorgeously between his thighs. He's not even... I blush. He's not even erect. Or not very, but even still, his cock looks like it's halfway down his thigh. I tremble with a lust and a hunger I've never felt before. A need I never knew I had. A desire I've never delved into. He climbs in behind me and gently starts to wash me. I close my eyes, panting as his huge hands sud me up, teasing over every inch of my skin, down my back, around my hips, up to slide over my aching nipples, then down, brushing my pussy between my thighs. He reaches for a cup on the side of the tub and slowly pours water over my head. Close your eyes, Sonishka, he murmurs. I do, throbbing with heat for him. He gets my long hair soaking wet, and then I feel the shampoo ooze over my head. I grin. He's washing my hair. He does it slowly, lovingly, sudsing my hair from scalp to the ends. He gently rinses the shampoo from it, and then even reaches for the conditioner. Holy crap, a girl could get used to this. When he's done, he pulls me gently against his chest. I blush, tingling as I feel his big, muscled arms surround me. My ass presses back into his cock, but this time I can feel him thickening against me. My body trembles with heat. You keep moving like that, and I won't be able to hold back, he murmurs thickly. I whimper. From what? I breathe. His mouth brushes my ear. From taking you. He growls. I moan. Maybe I don't want you to hold back. Careful, Shonishka, he grunts. Teasing is one thing, but I am weak with you. So be weak. Suddenly I gasp as his strong hands yank me around, spinning me until he crushes his mouth to mine. He grabs me, standing in the tub with me in his arms, lifting me effortlessly. He steps from the tub, both of us dripping wet, as he strides from the bathroom back into my bedroom. Right for the bed. Chapter 7 Roman Maybe this is wrong. Maybe I have no right laying my hands on a girl as innocent and sweet as her. But there's no stopping this. There's no stopping me from her. 
She moans into my mouth, kissing me deeply as I lay her out across the big pink princess bed. I drag my mouth down her body, leaving suck marks down her neck and her collarbone. I suck one nipple into my mouth, resisting the way she's trying to drag me back up. I want her squirming for me. I want her dripping fucking wet. She's never done this before, and I'm large, very, very large. I don't want to hurt her, but I am going to fill her with every inch of me. I nibble across her chest to suck the other nipple into my mouth. Then I kiss down her soft tummy, loving the way she shivers under me. Her pussy is so fucking sweet, like candy. My mouth drips and I groan as I drag my tongue through her silky lips. Roman, she coos. I suck on her clit, drooling spit down her already dripping wet pussy until she's glistening and quivering for me. Now she's ready. I slide up and lower my mouth to hers. I kiss her deeply as her legs spread around my hips. I drag my swollen cockhead over her pussy and she shudders in pleasure. I groan, rubbing her clit with it, leaking pre-cum all over her. Oh my God, she moans deeply. You ready for me, baby girl? I growl. Are you ready for me to slip my big cock into this sweet, tight little pussy? She whimpers and drags her nails over my hips. Please, she begs. I push my head down, and I hiss when I feel her petal lips open around my crown. My swollen head pushes into her, and she hisses. I can feel her tense, and I slow, but I don't stop. I roll my hips, sinking my thick dick into her. She starts to unclench, and I hear a moan of pure pleasure fall from her lips. Inch by inch, my swollen cock pushes into her sweet little pussy. She's so fucking tight and so slick and hot. I grip my teeth to hang on to my sanity as I drive deeper and deeper. Roman, Roman, yes, she moans. You're so big. All for you, Sonishka. She pauses and looks up into my eyes. You keep saying that. It means sunshine, I whimper as I lower my lips to hers. Because that's what you are to me. The first light I want to see in the morning and the only warmth I want throughout my day. She moans as her mouth crushes to mine. Her legs and arms wrap tight around me. I'm done holding back. With a thrust of my muscled hips, I sink the rest of my throbbing, aching hard cock into her hot little hole. Talia moans in ecstasy, and her hips rise to grind into me. Her eyes roll back as she clings to me. I slide back out and then thrust back in as she moans loudly. I grunt, muscles clenching as I thrust again, making her ass ripple as I pound into her. I rise up and look down, watching in lust as my thickness, glistening with her sticky arousal, pumps into her tight little pink pussy. She stretched so tight around me, but it's one of the most beautiful sights I've ever seen. I can't hold back. I thrust harder, deeper, running into her like an animal. She claws at my hips, rocking her hips into me harder as she moans and writhes beneath me. I can feel her walls clenching tighter and rippling around me. My mouth crushes to hers again. Our bodies rock together harder and faster until I know we're both going to explode. Come for me, Sonishka, I hiss. Let me feel this pretty pussy come for me now. Roman! She screams my name into my mouth as she wraps me so tight in her arms and legs. She moans as she starts to come, her pussy milking my cock as she shudders beneath me. I'm lost in her. I push as deep as I can as I let go. My balls throb and my muscles clench. I moan her name as my cum spills deep into her little pussy, filling her over and over. She's all mine. Forever. You're all mine. I groan into her mouth, echoing the decree in my head. All mine. Chapter 8 Roman 
It's dark out when I turn to let my eyes trace over her. Only the moon through the big bulletproof, blastproof windows glistens like a silver stroke across her skin. I grin, and my heart swells bigger than it's maybe ever been before. This is new. I've never once felt like this about anyone. There have been women in my life. I mean, I'm 40, and I haven't lived the life of a monk. But those women were barely blips on my radar, and now I actually hate that they were in my past at all. Right now, looking at Talia, I wish I'd met her the way she'd met me. Untouched, everything new. But then, with her, all of this is new, even to me. I keep watching her until my thoughts drift. Like it or not, there's a bigger picture here. A whole complicated picture outside these sealed windows. Victor is still out there. And this just made things more complicated than they were ever supposed to become. I exhale slowly. This got complicated, and now I don't know where the exit here is or how to get through it. Something glows through the bathroom door. I frown until I realize it's my phone. I slip from the bed to go grab it from where it's sitting on top of my pants from before. My jaw clenches when I pick it up. It's Victor calling me, but obviously it's not Victor, just his phone. What? I growl, knowing who I'm talking to before he chuckles. That how you answer calls from a friend? Geo snickers. You're no friend. Where is he? He's here, he's here. Geo chuckles. Alive? I hiss. My heart stops beating in the silence. Yeah, for now. My eyes narrow. You got balls coming after me like you did, Roman. Geo hisses. That is your name, right? Roman Savchenko, captain with Ivan's little band of commies. My eyes narrow. You understand that Russia hasn't been a communist country for like 30 years, right? Don't lecture me, you little shit, he snaps. Ivan sent you to take me out, huh? I say nothing. He chuckles. <laughs> well, you fucked up, didn't you? My eyes narrow in the darkness of the bathroom. I hate even thinking this, let alone saying it, but I need him to fear me so my friend doesn't die. You forget who I have. You have not me, he snaps. I bare my teeth. She's your daughter. There's movement by the door. I look up to see Talia standing there, wrapped in a sheet, watching me. Her face says she knows who I'm talking to. My dad? She whispers coldly. My mouth thins as I cover the phone. Talia, put it on speaker. I shake my head. No, Angel, please. I shake my head. I won't let her hear this shit from him. She's been hurt enough. Please, Roman, she pleads. I hate that I am, but I do it. I tap the speaker button. You captured a pawn, not the fucking king, you Russian dipshit. Geo grunts. Keep her. My heart clenches. Talia's face goes ashen. I pull the phone away to hit the button to end the call, but she walks close and stops me. No, she chokes. I, I need to hear this. What's your move, asshole? Gio goes on. A trade? <laughs> you think I don't know who the fuck I have down here? I got ears, idiot, and I'm not blind. This is the future of the fucking Koshenko Bratva right here. You know, the Italians, we used to run this town. We can lament the glory days another time, Gio, I growl. He laughs. You think I'll trade her for Viktor Komarov? For this kind of leverage on Ivan? Talia hugs herself, and my heart starts to break even more for her. I think we're done here. I end the call, drop the phone, and pull her into my arms. She doesn't cry, though. She just holds me tightly. I'm sorry, Angel. Don't be, she whispers. I've always known it, I just... She shakes her head. This should be a happier circumstance, I growl. For... She grins. For you just having taken my virginity? I roll my eyes. Roman, are you blushing? She giggles. No. She grins. You are. 
I think that's supposed to be my job right now. I smile as I sit in the edge of the tub and pull her into my lap. Your job is to stay with me, I growl. My dad, though, her brow worried. He has your friend. I nod and she looks away. You have to make the trade. My face tightens. It's more complex than that. Because of me? Yes, I answer without hesitation. Because there's no way I'm letting you go or have anything to do with Chris fucking Amato. But suddenly, I freeze. There's been a piece of this puzzle floating in my head, and I think it may have just clicked into place. The Amato family. She groans. Ugh, Roman. The deal was put on pause today, wasn't it? I mean your marriage deal for your father's business arrangements with them. She nods glumly. Yeah, for now, but it's a matter of time before they... Alfredo Amato was arrested this morning on federal charges. My heart surges as the dots connect. I want to hit myself for not seeing it earlier. In the adrenaline rush of everything that's happened tonight, I've forgotten seeing that on the news this morning, sitting next to Victor as we went over our hit for tonight. The deal with the Amato family is on pause because Alfredo just got nabbed by the fucking feds, I growl. My eyes practically glow with excitement at what this means. Talia turns her head to stare at me. Wait, he was? He was, I hiss. And your father has a correspondence with him. Her eyes go wide. Suddenly we're both up and bolting through the penthouse together towards Dio's office. The laptop is still open and unlocked, and I click back to the email correspondence. I grin widely. Fuck yes. What are we looking? Alfredo Amato was arrested at 7.30 this morning. She frowns. And? I grin as I point a finger at the times that some of the later emails were sent back and forth. Nine in the morning, 9.15, 9.37, 10.14, and it goes on like that for most of the morning and afternoon. Holy shit, Talia breathes as she grasps what I found. These were sent after his arrest? I nod. What does this mean? Aside from Alfredo having access to a phone or laptop in jail, which isn't that surprising given his power, I smile thinly. He was arrested publicly this morning on federal conspiracy and racketeering charges, meaning whoever emailed with him after that was made public about more conspiracy and racketeering type shit? My grin widens. It's now conspiracy with someone of criminal interest to the U.S. government. I turn to her. It's evidence to bring down your father. She stares back at me, her eyes wide, but with the hint of smile on her lips. But slowly, her brow furrows. But if you release it, he... Yeah. I look away. If I release this, Gio will kill Victor before the feds even get near him. What if... She bites her lip. What if I went out to him and tried to broker some sort of... Your father is an asshole but he still knows or thinks, I grin, leaning down to kiss her forehead, that you're the leverage. If you go out there, your friend is in trouble. I nod. Same outcome, yeah. She frowns, pulling close to me and pressing her face to my bare chest. I wish this was easy, she whispers. I wish we could just walk away from all of this. Me too. My arms wrap around her as I pull her tight. Me too. It's late, and she's had a long, long day and night. It's not long before we're back in bed, with her sleeping soundly next to me. But regretfully, I slip from the bed and grab my phone again. I call Victor's number. Well, 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 let me talk to him. I snap at Gio. Victor. You've got a lot of nerve tossing orders that put him on the phone or I start shooting. I lie. There's silence, and then a familiar voice grunts into the phone. How's the penthouse? I chuckle. <laughs> How are you? I've got an extra hole in me I would rather not have. You okay, though, hanging in there? I'm... He trails off. Yeah. Victor. I'm fine for now. Tomorrow is... He grunts. I'm pretty weak, Roman. I'm losing a lot of blood. Fuck. Look, I'm up here with... 
I know who you've got. How's it going? I grin, and it's like Victor can hear me smiling. He starts to chuckle. You sneaky motherfucker. I'm down here bleeding out and you're up there banging. It's not like that. I snap viciously. He stops laughing. Well, this is interesting. I didn't mean for this to, for any of this. I sigh, my eyes closing tightly. The Bratva has my first loyalty, Vic. You know that. So, so nothing. If you think you're going to trade Zio's daughter for me, you're fucking out of your mind. I grip my teeth. Victor, you're the future of this. Stop, come on, even I can tell you'd never actually make that trade, and I don't want you to. He sighs. You're into this girl, aren't you? Like a real thing. I close my eyes. Take that off the table. This is about making sure you're... <laughs> Guess this is more complicated, huh? I got... Yeah. He chuckles. <laughs> you deserve happiness, Roman. You know that, right? I shrug. Victor. Because I don't think you do know that. You punish yourself for everyone you've ever known who didn't make it. Every time something bad happens, you shoulder it. When I should shoulder, you shouldn't. He sighs deeply. Let the past go. Be happy, Roman. And if she makes you happy, like really happy, then leave me out of the equation. Can't do that, I growl. You can and you will. You're not my boss, Victor. He grunts. I will be. Not if you bleed out. Shit, he mutters. They're coming back for the phone, Roman. Don't. Time's up, Geo snarls. You have an hour to open up my fucking penthouse and get your ass out of it, or I shoot your friend and end this slow bleed. He hangs up abruptly. I'm seething, but so fucking tired, exhausted really, as I slip back to bed and slide next to a sleeping Talia. I grip my teeth, frowning as I try to find the answers here. I just gotta think. I gotta find the solution here. Sleep is dragging at me, but I fight it. I hold off because I have to find the answer. I need to... to... The adrenaline runs out, and I crash. Chapter 9 Talia He's still sleeping when my eyes open. It's dark, though, and the clock on the side table says 4.30 in the morning. I turn to look at Roman, and I smile. He's so rough and beautiful, and being here in this bed with him is something I could do forever. But I know what I have to do. In a sense, he's saved me. He's shown me color in a black and white world. I can't let him die, and I can't let his friend die. Slowly, I slip out of bed. I dress in jeans and a hoodie, and as quietly as I can, I pad into the main entranceway by the staircase. There's a code that only unlocks the elevator, not the full lockdown. I tap that in and slip into the elevator when it opens. I key in the code to relock the door, and I start to drop down to the ground level. My heart is thudding so loud it's almost deafening, but I know I have to do this. The elevator opens, and I gasp as ten men with guns whirl to level them at me. But when they realize who I am, the guns lower, and the whispering starts. Suddenly, my dad is pushing his way through to stare at me. Talia? He looks shocked to see me. He almost looks annoyed, too, but he hides it. Y you're free, my girl! He rushes over to give me a pretty lackluster hug. Hi, Dad. I smile a fake smile as I briefly hug him back, but inside I feel rage. The curtain has dropped on this whole charade between him and I. I've always known I was a pawn to him, but hearing it? Well, that's a step beyond. So he just let you go? He's passed out. My dad grins and whirls to his men. Get up there, go get his ass. Wait, I shake my head. The friend of his... He was part of this plot to kill you? To destroy this family? I deserve an Oscar for this. My dad smiles at my pretend wrath and fury. Yeah, he is, Talia, but we'll string both these fuckers up. I couldn't help with the marriage, I say tensely. I want to help the family, Dad. Let me take care of him, 
the friend. His brows arch. Hang on, Talia. Let me kill him. He balks, but then his smile widens. <laughs> wow. He chuckles, turning to his men. We got a hardballer here. They all laugh with him. Shit, Talia. A real chip off your old man's block, huh? He frowns. You're serious about this. Let me do this. I hiss. You're not gonna shoot. Yes, I am. He eyes me curiously, but then he grins. That's my girl. He chuckles darkly. He turns to one of his guys. Give her your piece and go with her to the trailer to make sure it goes okay. He turns back to me. You're sure? I've never been sure of anything. I smile and it's true. My dad laughs. All right, go make him bleed, Talia. We're going to go kill this motherfucker upstairs. No, he's not. They don't know that I've relocked the door at the top of the elevator. They can get up there, but they'll never get in without a welding torch in about five hours. The henchman he's pointed to nods and walks with me to the foreman trailer to the side of the construction site. When we get to the door, I stop and turn to him. Gun? He frowns. Can't shoot him without a gun, can I? I snap. He nods and sheepishly hands it to me. Thanks. Stay out here. Your father, stay out here. I snap, my voice full of an authority and a confidence I never had before, a power I never realized. The guy nods. Yeah, uh, of course, Miss Marchetti. I step into the trailer, turn, and click the lock to the door. When I turn around... My eyes fall on a guy tied to a chair, looking, well, awful. I slowly drink him in. He's tall and built, handsome in a rough way like Roman, but also a bit younger than Roman. For some reason, my mind drifts to my friend Fiona, but I roll my eyes and shove that away. Please, my uptight book nerd friend with a tattooed bratva killer? But then I blush. The same it would never happen could have easily been said about Roman and I less than 24 hours ago. The man, Victor, looks up at me and then drops his gaze to the gun. He cocks a brow. You're the executioner. I'm Talia. His eyes snap to mine in recognition. Interesting play for Roman, he growls. Not Roman's play. I walk towards him as his jaw clenches. Behind him, I start to yank open the ropes, binding him. You know what you're doing, Talia Marchetti? He grunts. Yeah, I'm saving Roman the only way I can. He grins, groaning as I help him stand. I think I'm going to like you. He chuckles with a grunt of pain. I grin and hand him the gun. I assume you know how to use this? That's a fair assumption. Good, because I don't even know where the safety is. He grins, but suddenly we hear voices outside, the sound of guys checking guns and my dad barking orders. They're going up? I nod. The door is locked, though. Your dad has construction dynamite. Would that get through the door? I tense. I, I have no idea. I tremble. Victor's face darkens. Then we'd better move. We go to the door of the trailer. With a nod from Victor, I slowly open it and step out, the guard turns with a frown. Weird, I didn't hear a gun. Victor might be half dead and bleeding, but he's still clearly a powerful man. His arm snakes around the guard's neck, choking him out before he drops to the ground. Shit, I groan, glancing at my phone. My phone's dead, but if we can find another one, I can call. No time. Victor turns, scanning the construction site until his eyes land on the huge crane standing tall all the way up above the penthouse floor. He smiles thinly and turns back to me. Since you're doing all this for Roman, no offense, but I can assume you're a little crazy? I frown curiously. Maybe? Good. Let's find out how crazy you are, Talia. Chapter 10 Roman I wake up to banging sounds, big, loud, booming thuds, and they're coming from the entryway to the penthouse where the elevator is. Shit. I whirl to Talia, but my heart clenches when I realize she's not in bed. Talia! 
I roar her name, lunging up and yanking my jeans on. I rush through the penthouse, yelling her name, before I realize the horrible truth. She's gone. I hear the sound of my phone back in the bedroom, though. I bolt back in there and yank it up as I see Victor's number calling. Geo, you son of a... It's me! She screams. My heart soars, relief flooding through me. Jesus, Talia. I groan. Where the hell... Go to the terrace, now! I don't need to be told twice that shit is going down. I move, fast. I rush through the penthouse again, out the sliding glass doors onto the huge outdoor garden terrace. I glance up at the lockdown security bars covering it like a cage. What now, princess? There's a control keypad on the wall. Punch in 77923008. It'll undo the lockdown in the penthouse. I tense. That'll open the door I assume your dad is trying to bang down now? Yeah, she blurts. But the bar's over the terrace, too. I frown. And then? But suddenly, something catches my eye. Movement in the semi-dimness of the early dawn. I turn and my eyes narrow. A construction crane is moving, twisting to swing the arm of it right across towards the edge of the terrace. I'm about to wonder why the hell they're starting construction with all this shit going down, when suddenly my jaw drops. Oh, shit. The man in the control box is Victor, and Talia is right next to him, staring at me grimly. You're shitting me, I growl into the phone. Hope you're not scared of heights, Talia says thinly. Okay, punch in the code. I tense. One sec. I bolt back into the penthouse and run to Gio's office. I'm not leaving without the laptop. I stick a book in it to keep it not quite closed, stuff it in the backpack next to his desk, and then rush back to the terrace. All right, I'm doing it. Here goes nothing. I turn and punch in the code. Instantly, there's a mechanical clicking sound as the bars begin to slide back. But I also hear the sound of the elevator door opening and men yelling as they charge in. Geo and his guys are inside. The windows next to me suddenly ping with bullets. The glass is bulletproof, but they'll be here in seconds. Time to do this. I whirl, I run, and I vault the edge of the rooftop terrace as Victor swings the crane past. For a second, it's just dead air, the feeling of imminent death as I fling myself across a forty-story drop. But then, my hands grip the edge of the crane arm, and my heart jolts. The crane starts to pull away from the roof just as Geo and his guys spill onto the terrace, Bullets whiz past me as I climb up onto the walkway of the crane arm. Suddenly, hands are grabbing me, helping me up. And when I clamber on, she's right there. Roman! She throws her arms around me, hugging me tightly. We need to move. Hey! Victor calls from the control box. The crane arm is still swinging, and I follow his pointed finger to the roof of the opposite building. Hang the fuck on! He roars. I grab Talia, I grab the crane, and I brace like hell. The arm smashes into the terrace of the other building. Metal wrenches and whines, and brick and mortar explode in chunks to fall to the ground below. The crane shudders to a stop, and all three of us bolt for the wrecked roof of the building we've just smashed into. Victor is on his phone, barking orders like the general he is. But me? I don't need to lead, or to control, or wield power. I just need her. We're shielded over here, the crane blocking any shot Geo and his men might have. I pull Talia into my arms, and I kiss her deeply as I inhale the scent of her. I barely know you, she giggles. I grin. I barely know you too, but I know you enough to know I'm in love with you. Her eyes go wide, and a blush creeps over her cheeks. Her lips curl, and suddenly she's laughing as she throws her arms around my neck. I love you too, she murmurs as her lips find mine. We're still there, kissing, when the Kashenko helicopter drops out of the sky to land on the roof. Lev, another Avtori Tet, jumps out and eyes Victor. You look like shit, he grins. So you, on a good day. Vic wheezes as our friend helps him into the chopper. He turns to us, arching a brow and smirking. You're coming too, I assume he says to Talia. She's coming too.
I growl. Well, get in. We're out of here. Talia giggles as I sweep her into my arms. I kiss her deeply, passionately, with all the love in my heart. Then we're on the chopper and pulling away into the dawn. Epilogue Talia Four months later The laptop in my dad's office was the silver bullet. It had everything on it, and ultimately that's what he wanted when Roman barricaded us in the penthouse. Not me. But I've made peace with that. The information about my dad's criminal organization on the laptop put him away. But I'm not crying. Not just because he was willing to trade me for business, but because of how bad he'd gotten. There's crime, and then there's heinous crime. And my dad's human trafficking operations involving poor girls was way over the line. But that's the past now. Now I have Roman, and a new life with him. Victor healed and is now the newly appointed head of the Kashenko Bratva, now that Ivan has stepped down. Today, though, is about us, Roman and I, and we're celebrating two milestones. One is his retirement from the Bratva with Victor's blessing. The other is our wedding. Today is the start of our new life together, and we're leaving Chicago, too. We have no idea where we're going, but also it doesn't matter. We'll go where we take each other. The West Coast, maybe, or maybe Hawaii to spend our days surfing and holding each other on the beach. We've got some money, some from a trust that was given to me after my dad's trial, and some from the small fortune Romans amassed over the years working for the Kashenko family. So we have money, and no more shadows chasing either of us. From here on out, I think it might just be sand, the crash of the surf, and his big arms around me. And do you? I do, Roman grunts hurriedly at the priest's question, grinning at me. I do too, I blurt, barely containing my excitement. Roman clears his throat. <clears throat> so if we could just get to the part where, oh, go ahead and kiss the bride, the older priest chuckles. I jump into Roman's arms, my lips find his, and I never want to pull them away. Because after a life locked in a tower, I finally found my happy ever after. The End This has been The Bratva's Hostage Written by Jagger Cole Narrated by Jarman Day Welcome back. Hey. All right. Well, thanks for being with us. I just want to get out again. <laughs> Everything will be in the show notes. There's lots yep. that we discussed. I'll oh, my God. Lots of nasty, dirty things we discussed. Um, should we talk about anything about what's up next or what? Yeah. So we were actually planning um, a longer-ish break, but we had this awesome lady who has done narration for our podcast work. She's a narrator, but um, she also has books. So she just so happened to send us an email and was like, hey, guys, do you want this to play on your podcast? And we're like, you know what? So Fuck yeah, a, we is do. it a holiday book or just a normal? It's uh, it's a New Year's Eve book, and it's called Like It's 1999. That's the name oh, of it. So, that's right. Yeah. Like It's 1999. Is it a full yep. book or a teaser? Or? I think it's a full book, although I see it on here, and it's three hours long. So I'm going to have to ask about that. <laughs> She said that book she, I know. So, you guys yeah. can listen to it because it's going to play during Christmas week, right? Yeah. Uh, we're so going to have can, a three-week break. So, yeah. So, wrapping presents and all that shit. Uh -huh. Just pop on this. There you yep. go. No it's going to be the week before Christmas. I mean, Christmas on a Sunday, I think, this year. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So, it'll be that week before. And then after that, we are going to take a much-needed long break until the beginning of the year. And we kick it off next. So what we were talking about before with the yep. Cupid guy from mm -hmm. so if you read Christmas Tree Topper which is going to be in a Christmas bundle so there's going to be a bunch of Christmas books in there plus this mm -hmm. short little fun Brand Christmas new book. story mm -hmm. and then you'll meet Cupid and god what was her name I just went blank Astrid <laughs> Cupid and Astrid, Astrid. okay yeah, uh -huh. and they're going to be the first book on the podcast next year Yep, January 18th. That's when we're coming back. So it's going to be a three week break after this next week. So it'll be kind of nice. So uh, we're right. going to make you guys miss us. 
anything else? I think that's about it. I think that's it. Yeah. I mean, you guys can stay in the Raimi Romance group. We'll all keep updating new releases and things like that and keep you guys updated on holiday books and such. But. Yeah. And we'll have lots of sales after Christmas too. So be sure and check that out then. All right. Well, tell them what to do. Fuck your day up. Make today your bitch. Don't be a dick. Bye, guys. Bye. Read me romance. Read, read me romance. Read me romance. Read, read me romance. You could take a look in a book, that's fine. Or you could sit back, relax, and unwind. And read me romance. Read, read me romance.